Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, our pilot commander today is Lieutenant Colonel Kasirye Kwanga. You know, the army is like the body. You got the eyes, the legs, and the arms. Just be fit, be ready to join action. That's my message to everybody in the army. Welcome to Owanapedia, the one-stop center for Uganda's history and the history of the rest of the world. My name is Tony Geoffrey Owana, and behind that camera is Herbert Semiano, as usual. We are in a very somber moment as we mourn the passing of the legend, Major General Kasirye Wanga. Not surprisingly, Kasiri Gwanga exited from this life in spectacular fashion on 9th June, which is celebrated as Hero's Day in Uganda. That he was a hero is not in doubt, but that he was also a human being and not a saint on earth is also plain fact. Uganda People's Defense Resistance Officer number 00692 Major General Samuel Fogg Waswa Kasirie Gawale Gawikwanga will linger long in the minds of many people long after his mortal remains go the way of all flesh. We at Owanapedia are going to try to tell the story of this great man in the modest way we can for indeed Kasiri was larger than life. Kasiri's service in the Uganda army, which some of you call Amin's army, his experiences in the war that ousted Amin in 1979, his near-death experiences in detention in Tanzania and later in a maximum security prison in Luzira, will not occupy space here because they have been told countless times. What is not in doubt is that the decision to fight the government of President Milton Obote did not come to Kasiria in an idealistic way. He did not go to war to liberate you. Kasiria was simply very angry. Why? On 2nd March 1982, his brother, the late Lieutenant James Kasiri of the Uganda Air Force, was brutally murdered in Machindia Barracks. Reason? The intelligence organs of those days had reason to believe that the attack on Uluviri Barracks of 23rd February 1982 by rebels of the Uganda Freedom Movement of Dr. Andrew Lutakome Kaira had seen the participation of the recently released Kasirye Gwang. The rebels planted a 60 millimeter mortar at Rubaga Cathedral, right next to the statue of the Virgin Mary, and began lobbing shells in Tulubiri Barracks, which is now the Kabaka's Palace. Kasirye had been famous as a, an artillery person. And since he had just come out of prison on an amnesty, there was a suspicion, and it was not without foundation, that he had been involved in that attack. Kasiri, for reasons best known to himself, denies involvement. But there's also a strong suspicion that he indeed was involved. 
the governments of those days, once they were looking for you on suspicion and they wouldn't get you, they would get your family. So they picked Lieutenant Kassiri, who was based in northern Uganda, brought him to Machindi Barracks and killed him. No part of his remains was ever recovered, simply disappeared. So Kassiri Gwanga decided to avenge his brother's murder and joined the ranks of Dr. Andrew Kaira's UFM. The spectacular raid on Lubiri, however, brought few benefits and the UFM suffered several setbacks, including the killing or capture of many of its top commanders and fighters. These captured included UFM Chief of Operations Major Hussein Adda and Chief of Staff Captain Mark Ayasi Kodili. That is when the UFM Commander-in-Chief, Dr. Andrew Lutakome Kaira, retreated to the United States of America, leaving the remnant of the UFM without command. What happened thereafter is partly revealed by Jeno Kasirio Gwanga in a report in the New Vision of 23rd June 1987. Kasiri reveals that he had secured a hideout for some of the dispersed UFM soldiers in a forest in Mitiana, which led to the creation of a new force later known as the Federal Democratic Movement for Uganda or FEDEMU on 24th January 1984. FEDEMU's overall field commander was the late Lieutenant Colonel George Chanzi Chitatamuima Mkwanga who had been Dr. Andrew Kaira's deputy in the UFM and who had fled to Nairobi from where he returned to take charge and Kassiri became one of the top commanders with the rank of captain. And this is perhaps when he got the rarely used nickname of Fog, which suggests the ability to conceal oneself. Fedemu's chairman and commander-in-chief was the late Lieutenant Colonel Dr. David Gemiliango Luanga. Luanga served as the Minister of Environment in the first Museveni government and when he was arrested and later acquitted of treason charges, he did not return to cabinet. In an interview with Uganda television panelists in 1987, Dr. Luanga throws a little more light on UFM and FEDEM. Perhaps Wanapedia will tell the story of FEDEM one day, but let us tune in to Dr. David Luanga. What exactly prompted you to start FEDEMO? You see, FEDEM was originally UFM. But however, from our internal misunderstandings, we decided to form FEDEM as a separate organization. The reasons we are really administratively in that the executive of UFM had moved so far apart gone abroad too far from the men in the field and we thought we need closer supervision. And uh, now, as the head of FEDEM, when uh, the NRM took over power in Kampala, you voluntarily gave up your army. Do you regret having given up your army? I have no regrets for having given up the FDA. This is because Actually, the FDA had done its job, and now it was high time we formed a strong national army. Yeah, before we go to this question, can we, because our viewers may not understand these terms, FDA, FEDEMO, UFM, you have mentioned, can you tell us? FEDEMO stands for Uganda Federal Democratic Movement. Mm -hmm. FDA stands for Federal Democratic Army. And UFM? Uganda Freedom Movement. Okay. On 27th July 1985, the Uganda National Liberation Army overthrew President Milton Obote and installed Army Commander Tito Okello as President of Uganda. After taking oath, General Tito invited all rebel groups in the bush to join his government 
and Fedemu's acceptance of the offer so Kassiri deserting Fedemu for Yoweri Museveni's NRA. Mark you, even NRA NRM rejected the offer. The last Fedemu function at which Kassiri was seen in public was the burial of a Fedemu officer known as Galauzi who had died in a motor accident along Masaka Road. That Kassiri is standing beside Nkwanga is evidence of his seniority in the Fedem top brass. In deserting, Kassiri took off with several Fedem soldiers along with their weapons. And for this serious offense, the Fedem High Command reported the sentence team to death. Of course, the sentence could not be carried out without first capturing Kassiri but he was by now a senior officer in the National Resistance Army. Kassiri went on to score more marks by acting as the chief escort of Omulangira Ronald Mwenda Mutebi, also known as Savataka, when he visited Masaka and other parts of Uganda, then under the control of Museveni's NRA. also seen inspecting the crucial Katonga bridge position with top NRA officers led by General Fred Rijema as plans to capture Kampala took shape. NRA sources say Kassiri's gunnery helped subdue the Demile UNLA houses positioned at Summit View Kololo as Kampala fell to the NRA forces. In the middle of 1986, the NRM announced that it had neutralized the coup plot involving several politicians and Bush officers from FEDEMU and UFM. Those arrested included Major Fred Chiberu Mpiso, Captain Davis Sozintambi, Energy Minister Andrew Kaira, Commerce Minister Varisto Nyanzi, and Environment Minister Dr. David Luanga. Kassiri, who was the NRA director of barracks and stores, was among the key state witnesses. A defense lawyer who tried to intimidate Kassiri by saying he went to the bush to kill people was silenced when Kassiri admitted it and revealed that he had killed all those who had murdered his brother, Lieutenant James Kassiri, except one Captain Ageta, who was in Tanzania. This story appeared in Muno newspaper of 20th August 1987. But there was more. The following day, Commander Kassidi told the same court that he had been deployed to infiltrate the plotters because membership to the plot was restricted to Baganda 
and he rejected the defense lawyer Paul Mpongu's accusation that he was playing malice against federal officers who had sentenced him to death for desertion in 1985. Kasire also denied that he was responsible for the disappearance of a former Fedemu brigade commander named Hitler Mayanja, who was also among the plotters. Kasiri, however, admitted he had arrested Mayanja, but had handed him over to NRA authorities. When NRA adopted formal military ranks on 6th February 1988 in Lumiri Barracks, Kasiri won the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. The presidential press unit was on duty that day. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I accept this rank which has been conferred on me by the High Command of the National Resistance Army, acting on the orders of the Army Council, for the reason which I will explain later on. I thank them for this confidence. Secondly, I've got to do my own duty which is which is as follows in accordance with the decision of the army council to change the present nra ranks into regular army ranks as president and commander in chief of the armed forces i have given the following officers the ranks mentioned against their names. RO53, Senior Officer Serwanga Ruanga, Lieutenant Colonel. RO54, Senior Officer Kirim Pita, Lieutenant Colonel. RO63, Senior Officer Dr. Ronald Bata, Lieutenant Colonel. Ara O eight four senior officer Miksha Muntu, Lieutenant Colonel. Ara O senior officer Seba Garajams, Lieutenant Colonel. Ara O six nine one senior officer Okero Koro Major. Ara O six nine two senior officer Kasidi Gwanga, Lieutenant Colonel. Lieutenant Colonel Kassidi would make news again by becoming the first NRA officer to attend the prestigious Fort Leavenworth Military Academy in the USA. The offer came to Uganda with a condition that the officer must not have HIV or AIDS and many suitable candidates simply chickened out. In those early 90s, testing for AIDS required superior courage, especially because the results took nearly one month to return, and more seriously, there was no cure after knowing that you had it. Cassidy told friends that picking the results from Secretary for Defense Dr. Ben Mbonye was a terrifying experience, but he was found free of AIDS and went on to take the course at Fort Leavenworth. During the 10th anniversary celebrations of the founding of the NRA in 1991, Lieutenant Colonel Kassiri Gwanga commanded the parade in Rubiri Barracks. The event was captured for posterity by David Mutebile and the Presidential Press Unit. The 10th anniversary celebrations of the founding of the National Resistance Army were held at the first NRA Divisional Headquarters Riviri in Kampara on Wednesday, 6th February 1991. 
It was on this day, 10 years ago, in 1981, that 27 armed combatants of the NRA, led by President Joel Museveni, stormed Kabamba military barracks and captured arms and ammunition that signaled the beginning of the protracted people's armed struggle against fascism that eventually culminated into the capture of state power five years ago on the 26th of January, 1986. Celebrations were attended by the Army Commander, Major General Mujisha Muntu, the Vice Chairman of the National Resistance Movement, Alhaji Moses Chigongo, the Chief Justice, Mr. Justice Wako Wambuzi, the Prime Minister, Mr. George Cosmas Adiebo, the First Deputy Prime Minister and National Political Commissioner, Mr. Elia Kategaya, the Third Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Abu Mayanja, Cabinet Ministers, members of the National Resistance Council, the former Army Commander, Major General Eddie Tumine, the Secretary for Defense, Major General General Okecho, the Chief of Staff, Brigadier Sam Nanyumba, senior army officers and military attaches from the various diplomatic missions in Uganda. The occasion was presided over by Lieutenant General Yoweri Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda and Commander-in-Chief of the National Resistance Army. <laughs> Right, 
Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, our parade commander today is Lieutenant Colonel Kasirye Gwanga. The second in command is Major Burundi. The parade adjutant, Captain Kareba. The parade admin officer, Lieutenant Mate. The color party, Lieutenant Baguma, assisted by Lieutenant Mugarula. And the parade RSM is Warrant Officer One Ngobi. Thank you, Your Excellency.
Fellow combatants, ladies and gentlemen, let me once again welcome you at Lubiri Parade Ground where we are marking the celebrations of the 10th anniversary of NRA. As Director of Training in the NRA in 1995, Lieutenant Kanoka City hosted President Yoweri Museveni to a display of the combined arms capacity of the Young Army, an event that was captured by Stanley Marisaba of the NRA Directorate of Information.
You are in Kawamba in a place called Karama Hills, Namuvendi district. And uh, right with me, I have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kastiri Wanga as the, the coordinator of this exercise, God named Sovereign Chetanda. And this is combined arms exercise. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kastiri, what's the objective of this exercise? Yeah, the objective really is just to bring together the arms of the army, how they play together. You know, the army is like the body. You've got the eyes, the legs, and the arms. So the same thing here. You find you've got artillery to support the troops when they're going out. They try to make bombardment, and then you find the tanks who can go through any terrain like you've just seen when you're down there. And then you find you've got the infantry, the man who goes right on the objective. So what we do here is to get them together. They learn how to fight together to like each other. What do you hope to achieve after this exercise? That is a lot amazing. People to be ready to go into action any time, any place, in any terrain. Like you see the terrain here, the terrain is really punishing, as you have seen yourself. It's punishing, it's very hot, but they work, they cut down trees, they do all sorts of things. How long have we been here? We've been here for a month and a half now. A month and a half? Sure. And when are you finishing? Well, we hope to play on the 11th of this month. And that's when we end up the exercise. But all the same, we are going to many. This is a training ground. So these people go to bring in others. Could we think you are preparing for the Liberian exercise, or something like that? We've got a Liberian contingent who are preparing to go to Liberia. I think you've talked to some of them. And they are involved in this exercise. But we've got a contingent. We, we train the Liberian group, and then we've got other troops from other divisions of the army. Uh, well, this is uh, we, we are we are in the um, an, an army week. What message do you have to soldiers, combatants, and the remaining population? Yeah, just be fit, be ready to go in action. Anyway, that's my message to everybody in the armed forces. Thank you. Thank you. Sinadola, 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 do you? Sinadola, 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 do you? Sinadola, 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 do you? Sinadola, 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 do you? Sinadola, 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 do you? Sinadola, 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 Sinadola. And the battalion deputy will be the battalion chief of staff, the great tank commander, and the main commander. Sir. This is my son. This is our runner. But he's supposed to be here. He's in the middle of the city. 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 Then here, the other runner. Thank you.
as the acting chief of training in National Resistance Army, I warmly welcome you to Kabamba Training School. Sir, you have been invited here to view a combined arms exercise which we have just completed. This has been carried out by different arms of NRA, mainly we had the artillery people in the supporting role. We had the armor also in the supporting role and the infantry. So the aim of the exercise was to demonstrate how the different arms combine together to execute any given mission at any given time. Initially, other than the Chief of Combat Operations that explained to you this was a training exercise for the mechanized regiment. Uh, we saw a chance to use this passing out parade and demonstrate combined arms relationships in execution of military missions. Sir, I'm happy to inform you that this has been a very giant step in our endeavor to build a lean mean combat force technologically orientated to live in the coming 21st century. This exercise was codenamed Sovereign Thunder. In my capacity as Chief of Training, NRA, I beg now, sir, to baptize it in your presence, Exercise Exposure. I've got some reasons for this baptism. During this training exercise, we've discovered a lot of individual weaknesses in different fields, and this has been a great lesson to officers and men who are playing this exercise. Most of them have found out where they are weak. We on the training part have been So, sir, all in all, this exercise has made of sir and men of this army appreciate the immense work that face the if they are proud they walk the nation and the guardians. 
I'd like to make some put him to shelf. ya makofi na na washukuru nyinyi wote kwa kazi mmefanya nataka turekebishe haya uvivu mwingine ambao uko kwa jeshi asante sana Army celebrated 15 years on 6th February 1996 in Mbale, Kasiri Gwanga took charge of the parade and his action was captured by the Presidential Press Unit. <laughs>
this was a match passed in zero, in zero match. We are about to see them in a, a quicker match. IPDF, pamoja na police, prisons, tali kwa ukaguzu wako ndugu rais.
Sasa mstari wa kutakulia. Mstari wa kutakuliza. Mstari gausa. Wali dela songa mbele kwa Isma. Pamoja na Rak. Saka. Bele. Tamia. In the year 2000, Kasirio Gwanga sought leave from the army to command a campaign against household poverty and backwardness in his native Mubende. He was elected district chairman and he granted Tarisita's Lieutenant Okeiro Kogota an interview which was published in the army's magazine issue of March 2000 titled The Energetic Mubende Governor, whose highlights we bring you. The story goes, he will openly boast that he shoots from the hip and is not only referring to the armed thugs he dispatched to the other world a few years back when they attempted to grab his official double cabin pickup. There is another dimension. When you shoot questions at him, he turns in his seat and like one of them from the Wild West, effortlessly fires back answers in a volley without giving a damn. He can be fiercely frank. Finally, when he gets up, donning his trademark leather cap and catchy shooting jacket, he strides and swings with a spring in his step. And that is Colonel Kasirio Gwanga for you, the flamboyant, energetic chairperson of Mbwende district, who but prefers the tag of governor and is more at ease in the field inspecting projects than sitting in his office adjusting neckties. The colonel twice sprang up on his feet and dared this writer to challenge him to do 50 press-ups. His firm conviction is that any soldier who can not do 30 press-ups has no business being in the army. He does 47, which is his age, daily. Why does he prefer to be addressed as governor? He answers. Because I govern people, I'm not a politician, I'm a leader. A leader is like a teacher. I am not like some of the politicians here. They fear the people. They fear the masses because they promised what cannot be delivered. Heaven on earth. Me, I don't make promises. I don't even like people coming to my house. I need my privacy, man. Besides, I've got to think for you. I can't do that if I'm surrounded by people with petty problems, funeral rites, marriages, and you expect me to get involved? 
Oh no. Then when do I get time to think? When do I get time to govern? Well, when there's time, we can meet at the bar, buy a kidomola of booze, seat, exchange ideas, argue and quarrel. They abuse me, I abuse them. When I get roads repaired, some perhaps don't realize I have brought money to their doorsteps. So I tell them, you don't even have a toilet, give me a break. Whom are you waiting to dig it for you? You'll do it yourself. If you don't, I'll lock you up in a jail. Has experience in the army served him in good stead? Don't do other people's jobs. We delegate power. That is what makes us soldiers superior. I always warn civilians never mess up with a military man. The problem with civilians is he will want to be an LC5 chairperson at the same time do the job of the DEO, do the job of the doctor and that of the engineer. How can that be? My vision is to see Mubende become Uganda's model district, to see Mubende become the breadbasket of our region. We have all the potential. Okei Rukogota concludes the interview writing that Mukono district chairperson who is also president of Uganda Local Authorities Association Mr. Chiwanukamusi trooped in with the organization's Secretary General Rafael Majezi in Tao. By the time they were through with this, Kasirie realized that he's one hour late for two meetings up country. Young man, take that more next time. He, he waves to Taresita. Kano Okeiru Kogota participated in the Bush War and was a sergeant when the army magazine Taresita began in 1987. He's not in active journalism but has never quit journalism. That makes Comrade Okeiru Kogota the oldest journalist in uniform. In February 2005, Kasiri was promoted to brigadier and retired from the army. Three months later in May 2005, he was recalled to serve and the cheeky red paper story of 5th May 2005 said President Museveni had recalled him to assist in the hunt for votes for the 2006 elections. Brigadier Kassidi became a very regular guest at political radio talk shows. It may be of interest to you that towards the end of his life, Jino Kassidi Gwanga showed a remarkable affinity for people power and its leader, the Honorable Robert Chagulani Sentamu also famously known as Bobby Wine. Indeed, there was even a story which I read somewhere on social media which said the, um, Bobby Wine had managed to recruit Kasiri Gwanga into his ranks. And there are records which say, that man, that man is very, very good. That, that was General Kasiri saying. What most of us choose to ignore is that General Kasiri Gwanga was also President Museveni's special advisor on security in Uganda. And while you might celebrate uh, his recruitment into a political organization like People Power, it is also prudent to remind yourself that even in those engagements with that popular young man Bobby Wine, Jeno Kasirio Gwanga would still have been on official duty. We cannot tell the full story of RO00692 Major General Samuel Fogg Waswa Kasirie Gawale Gari Gwanga. All we can ask is that the Almighty God treats this wonderful man with mercy. Stay tuned to Onapedia and don't fail to subscribe, otherwise, you miss out on a lot more. Salutations from Herbert Semyan and myself, Tony Geoffrey Owana, as we salute the memory of this great man. <laughs>